as well as our locations, both in Encinitas and in Balboa Park, are on the unceded ancestral land of the Kumiya people. Um, but I am thrilled to introduce Ya Ousu tonight. He is our current artist in resident and our first artist in resident for this season. Limitless growth, limited world, limitless growth, <laughs> limited world. This season is about exploring consumption, but really from a different perspective, rather about things that we consume, thinking about how or how what we value dictates what we consume and how we consume it, thinking from cultural consumption to monetary consumption and really how are our value systems built uh, around these ideas. And each artist is bringing their unique interpretation of this question. What do we value? How does that impact the, our communities or different people all over this world? So yeah, Russo uh, is going to take us on his uh, interpretation of this question, thinking about the penny, starting off with the Pacific Pesua, uh, the, the Ghanaian penny. I'm going to mispronounce Ghanaian, I want to it's going to happen. Um, and um, really thinking about how the penny is deconstructed through its value from raw material to that of a monetary material and then ultimately in an art piece and how does this change the value or the consumption of this penny. So um, I would like to give a little bit of a list of provenances for our amazing artist, Yaluzu. He was born in Ghana, now lives in Brooklyn. He uh, received an MFA from the Pratt Institute in New York. And this is his first solo museum exhibition, so we are really, really excited to be able to, to share that, ex that moment with you. Um, he has exhibited all over the world, including uh, at Gallery 1957 in both London and Accra, Ghana. Um, he's exhibited at Steuben Gallery in New York, at South Louis Institute, at Macau in uh, Marrakesh, Morocco, and he also has a permanent installation with Facebook. Uh, he's also the recipient of the Pratt Institute, uh, Pratt Institute's Pratt Circle Award and Outstanding Student Award. And he um, has also received the Kunyesha Art Prize for Contemporary Art. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, he's also uh, recently been shortlisted for the Norval Sovereign African Art Prize, which is really, really amazing. So congratulations, Joe. Uh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, and he recently uh, completed another residency at Epi Gallery in Dubai, which will be opening uh, right after the conclusion of this residency. So uh, the exhibition resulting exhibition. So that is really exciting. So help me in welcoming our amazing artist and resident, Yaku Luzi. I leave the text and my, my voice is very low, but um, I want to thank the ICA San Diego for having me as a resident, as his resident, and also for everybody for coming to the university to really talk about my work. Um, to start off, so I studied in painting and sculpture in Ghana, uh, and I completed in 2015, but around 2013, um, as a painter, I think I got a little bored uh, with the subject. I was only confident with the skill, but I needed more. And at one time when I went to the sea or the beach ocean side, which is like the southern of Ghana, to do a pinhole ca uh, camera project, I, I realized that a few days after that project, I came back and I realized that passwords, which is like the pennies, that's copper coated had changed color to these beautiful textures. So from there, I felt like, oh, this would be a very interesting material to paint with. Um, and that began my journey into exploring currency of that material as an art. 
um, as we're working to see. Um, and soon after, I became interested in uh, the contest and content and even the production of the material and realizing that it was produced by the Royal Canadian Mint and that actually wasn't producing their own money. It became a, a very interesting political material. Um, so I began researching into uh, past, and of course, we were being colonized by almost everybody, Portuguese, uh, Germans, the English mostly. And uh, at some point, our colonial um, master, our governor, was, uh, was Canadian. So that kind of imperial uh, sublimity was you know, quite apparent in even our economy. Uh, we began exploring the idea of mapping, which was uh, primarily our train systems, our commodities and movements of objects and commodities were actually built around places where specific things were, where gold is, is where the train lines run, where timber is where the, the, the train lines run. And, and building these um, kind of gigantic uh, map-like objects, and uh, that reflected the state of our economy and the state of our independence, what it meant which has an independent country. Um, and soon enough, uh, the West became sculptural in a way that it was actually also um, interrogating structures. Yeah. OK, there you go. Hello, hello. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Much better. Um, so I was also exploring and experimenting with form and, and materials as well. As well. And at this point, I introduced for the first time I introduced metal, and I was also curious about how uh, my works, which as a painter, you know, they all ended up in a flat wall, and people had to stand in front of it. And I was experimenting how these objects could actually live in a space where the people, the audiences became part of the work. So in at least the installations, the work was actually made in a way that you could actually go under it and experience the work from inside, you know, something that painting didn't allow you to, and even three-dimensional objects uh, were just static in a way that you couldn't really dig into it. Um, and so I was exploring such forms. And Yeah, and also I had the opportunity to uh, engage with this space. It was like the collapsed uh, railway system in Ghana, and most of the train systems that didn't work. And these were like pre-colonial um, uh, systems that were already infrastructures that existed. And when I, I was, you know, researching into this place, I realized, you know, it felt as if the political system was almost acting as as loose as the political system is. You know, it's just the flamboyant representation of a body or power that was almost like non functional At the same time, it was also reflecting uh, that our idea of um, what the penny or the peso had become. Because in 2007, when they released the peso, it almost immediately lost its value. It couldn't be traded for anything. It couldn't be exchanged for anything. So these forms almost function as the value of the of the of the of the peso itself, which later on will make sense why I use the penny. Um, and also, for the first time, the West moved out of the control of kind of um, static gallery spaces into like outdoor spaces where the audiences were actually um, engaging with the, with the pieces differently, and as well as nature and the environment also was also playing part of the work. So now the works were like almost like performing or performance pieces in itself. And it was living in these spaces that already had life but it had lost its uh, kind of functionality. Um, yeah, so you could see some of them coming up. Also, I mean, it was the early days when I started using it, so technically I wasn't really, really getting my hands on how to get it technically fixed properly. Um, but like I said, these, I see this specific project called Unwoven Pieces, were forming like elusive columns uh, into these kind of non-functional um, structures that already had, before the colonial, or during the colonial era, expansion to come, uh, kind of uh, carry commodities or things like that. Um, and uh, in 2017, um, Ghana gave our independence in 1957. So in 2017, being the 60th anniversary, 
there is also this kind of art festival. It's a huge one that happens in Ghana. And I was given the space to like create something in response to the whole theme of the festival. And I think it was, I had only a month to create something. And because it's like thousands of people come, I was thinking about something that would be immediately striking and relatable to people. So I did this um, Ghana flag that was also in response to the state of our economy um, after 60 years of independence when it meant to be economic independence uh, who was controlling our analysis or economy um, at the time in 2017. And as please take note of the, you know, the beautiful colors and a little bit and then you see that the, the festival happens in one of the most uh, like in Polish uh, neighborhoods. And so having a huge planet of maybe 30 foot, uh, 15, like a huge kind of installation like that planet with money, uh, people came in and you know, they really thought it was now valuable, you know, like we all had this kind of the money. So you can see like, and this is within a span of a few hours, maybe an hour or two, you know, people started cleaning off because they thought it was new. Um, also like that, I kind of feel like it was, it was because um, the, you know, the color has changed, the textures have changed now, it's now gold, it's now red, it's now, you know, turquoise or green. It felt like a different value to them. You know, like they would pick it and know it's a one as well. But really it felt like different. So the question of what value actually means, um, because of what I was doing to the penny or the Pesua, you know, changed almost immediately. And people's relation to money now felt like, because it's been turned into something else now, it makes more sense and it's more valuable. And yeah, I'll show you this. Yeah, this is how it looks like now. And yeah, it's painted up. I tried to patch it up, but I realized at a time, I, I kind of feel, in my mind, I had made this beautiful object, a uh, beautiful artwork, and you know, I, I've lost the beauty to it. But then I think a year or two later, I started realizing that the actual piece wasn't the object that was hanging there, but it was the people's reaction, it was the place that was being put, it was the time at which that the work actually lived. Because now it's, it's hanging in this five-star hotel, um, and the contest has shifted almost immediately because they have like a sign to it which is describing what happened and of course that's where almost uh, all the um, high profile conferences like high profile visits even if uh, like uh, Joe Biden goes to Ghana right now, that would be the hotel he would stay at. That's called the Campus Hotel. It's the you know, most valuable hotel. So that space becomes different because now, now the work is pre you know, presented in this kind of pristine manner, uh, kind of curated, organized to fit a new audience. So uh, even looking at it now, it's like the whole idea of even space, how space um, kind of also pro produces another form of value, um, because in that place, it, you know, people thought it was just something for us to share, but here people admire and look at it in a very different um, kind of context. So this this was, and this has been a few things that I was, a few projects that I've done, many more, but uh, these were things that I was trying at, and trying to interrogate our economic independence as a nation, as a Gold Coast, and all of that. And then I moved to New York, um, so I <laughs> yeah, and then I moved to New York in 2018. And what happened was uh, I was looking for a much wider context. I thought that I had applied to schools in London and Edinburgh, but I thought America had a very strong connection to the material that I was using, also because it was built, it was the new world that was built, uh, the new world that required labor and uh, commodity to build this space. And I think I didn't also know anybody in New York, so I was like, yeah, I'll come and see what I can do. And in 2018, I, I visited the Philly Mint, and there, I wanted to get a fair sense of how the penny was meant, meant it, uh, what it was about. Um, and when I went there, I realized uh, they were plated sheets of metal, and they were like rolls of this huge uh, rolls of sheets, and that was what the penny was made from. And actually, the lady at the 
front desk was like, you know, I was asking too many people, like, and she gave me this pack, and it had one circle which had nothing stamped on it, um, but it's just copper plated, and one which had the penny, uh, the penny stamped out of it. So immediately my mind went to the idea of uh, almost the illusion of currency, the illusion of money, the illusion of value, like who gets to determine what, how, you know, or why this is now a valuable or tradable object. And so it became interesting because I was always looking at the, um, the political and the most complex version of the object. So in New York, I started visiting like the uh, factories and manufacturing kind of fabricating sites where you know there are leftovers of metals that I was looking at. And my work is always trying to like repurpose the least of uh, things or worthless things and trying to understand how that generates another form of value. So I went to these phases and was collecting the residues that comes out of it. And you see in the mental works what and how these objects turn to be a new form of and new aspects of value. So I was collecting these uh, metal sheets from their dams, from their cutouts, and um, I, I was just because I realized, you know, through the ages, through the 1700s, uh, the penny had changed from uh, pure copper, uh, to be like 90% copper, at some point zinc because of the war in 1843, uh, and then uh, all again, coming down to now when it's like 2.5% uh, copper and uh, like 97.5% zinc. So that idea of like the illusion of money also runs again in place in these objects. So uh, same in 2019 when the New York State raised the minimum wage from I think $12 to $15. That uh, was quite interesting because I was working as a student um, at Bonny, and I have like a couple of hours of work. You know, at, you know, we have, and also yeah, as a Ghanaian and uh, an immigrant, you have a couple on how much you could also earn depending on uh, like the hours you work. So I was curious about knowing how much everybody was working, you know, everybody's time or what time was worth. So I took this out, and also because New York economic kind of demographic is was quite diverse, because I can have people working at, working at uh, Wall Street next to a deli while people are um, selling pizza and, and earning like less, well, less than the minimum wage. So I was asking these questions and trying to understand what value meant to almost everybody. Um, and in these, I chose specific sites. So I chose like the Wall Street, I chose the major uh, train stations, I chose uh, Times Square, I chose Grand Central. Um, I was doing this even at the dinners that I organized, I chose uh, at schools and even at shows. And what these places meant to me um, was, was quite interesting because I realized at Wall Street, you know, stopping like a, an insurance or you know stockbroker to ask him what they would do for a penny was like a different question that you you ask uh, perhaps like a, a cleaner or a janitor what they would do for a penny because to them they meant different uh, and the responses also came different because. At, Central Park where people were actually enjoying time and it looked like time had mellowed and the value of time was different from somebody running after the train or somebody actually running to get a deal done or something like that. So I was trying to get to the point of understanding what money or value means or the relationship between value and place, the relationship between value and time and the relationship between value and exchange. Because I was actually, as I'm doing now, and I was playing what, what this new iteration is later on, was actually was paying people back a penny. And even though they wouldn't, they didn't know that I was actually going to pay them a penny, they would do the card, and when I gave them back, 
We actually don't want to take it because like now we actually have to deal with the <laughs> Yeah, so um, and and I love this project so much because it took me out of my 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 not necessarily comfort zone, but it took me into another layer of what value could be produced and what actually even the production of artwork could mean to me. To me. Um, and yeah, and I, I did this around New York. Um, and later on in 2019, uh, in the spring-ish, I usually stay in the studio quite late, and then after like a studio time, I switch on my I switch on my phone, and I would like uh, a lot of texts and phone calls, people trying to understand. Oh, are you okay? I don't know why you say like what is happening, and then apparently also that night I had never seen like uh, that many armed policemen like that before in New York. Even though there is like a very heavy police presence in New York, um, but then they were arresting illegal immigrants. Um, and that was the, 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 the reason for that kind of uh, number of police. Um, so it may be that idea of being out of place, what it means to be uh, like an outsider in a place or what it means to be belonging into a place became very apparent. Uh, I was thinking of the treatment of people depending on where they're from or who they are, uh, that idea of other place and people and bodies. That became something I was interested in. So, and also watching um, Footages of how illegal uh, immigrants were treated, how people and families were separated, and also being given like emergency blankets as comfort, you know, something as cheap as that and light as that. So it became like these striking things. And at the time, uh, it was when the government also was also you know kind of proposing the idea of fencing, you know, almost protecting the United States from uh, immigrants and people. And so that whole idea of like separation and the whole idea of outside and inside and what gets to be protected and what gets to be included uh, was very interesting to me. So I started making works that reflected these ideas of uh, fencing, these ideas of warming, these ideas of separation, uh, inclusion, uh, which was the major kind of subject around the time. And yeah, also this deconstructing even the American flag being deconstructed almost like barricades, creating these scenarios that reflected the actual kind of how I was feeling at the time um, and what was happening in the US at the time um, in 2019. And then um, I finished school, COVID happens, our, our shows are not happening, like every, everything is closed out in a few moments. So I moved to Ohio actually. Um, because you know, I have family there, and there's much more space for me to work. And then uh, the Black Lives Matter, like George Floyd gets killed, and people are outside actually protesting after a long time, or for a long time, for the value of black people. And it's like, no, it looks like I need to be back in New York. And so I came back. I wanted to be as part of this as much as I could. And so I joined them in a lot of the protests, you know, a lot of the advocacy and all of that. And then I realized uh, in the studio I found a 1920 coin. And, and that was like, usually the work begins with things like that. It could be like the time, it could be like the nature of the penny, you know, it could be the material. But this time it was about time. And the 1920 was like, okay, uh, kind of doing research, I realized Marcus Gavi, uh, introduced the African-American flag, uh, which was like the three stripes, the red, green, black, in 1920. And he, he unveiled that in New York. I was like, okay, cool. And then now in 1918, David Hammond did this uh, kind of version of those colors into the American flag uh, as a symbol of African kind of liberation, African value, you know, things that were projecting the relevance of you know, black people working in our existence and things like that. So I thought, well, if this happened in 1920, and if you've been the same subjects in 1920 and before, probably, or possibly, like, obviously, in, and we are still battling this in 2020, then, you know, what does this mean? Like, because when you think about the pennies in 1920, they are definitely made with more copper content, so materially they were valuable. Now it's made of 2.5% copper, but it still carries the same, the same work, 
um, to a wetlands environment. So I felt it was a strong object to kind of talk about this scenario as, as I could. So I did uh, the African American flag with coins that were ranging from 1920 up until 2020 uh, as, a, as a century piece that was actually addressing or talking about this, this issue. And then, then again, I, uh, so, in, um, because it was COVID, though, uh, like I wasn't getting materials as I would, and I used to make these works on uh, aluminum panels, composite panels, and there weren't any shops open for me to buy. So I had started this work um, uh, for my MFA, MFA thesis, and I didn't finish, so I was like, okay, I'll, I'll scrape off the pennies so I can make a new work. And whilst doing that, um, the idea of almost erasing something that has already, or, you know, or doing something that has been done, erasing the economies, because now we are still leaving imprints of like either Abraham Lincoln or you know the capital that's on the penny on there. So it's like even though the penny actually isn't there, there are still remnants or, or you know degrees of all like memories of the actual thing. And then immediately, uh, what happened in 1921 in Green, uh, like Tulsa came to mind, you know, the idea of almost only doing like, an economy that had been built over years. Um, so I got some uh, maps from the, um, uh, from the, um, Yes. So, <laughs> so I got some maps uh, from the Library of Congress and from 1916 up until I think 1960, and I layered them on top of each other, you know, kind of uh, looking at how uh, an economy had been erased and the new economy that had come. And I also made this this piece that was reflecting almost the idea of doing something because now I was picking up the pennies from a different context and placing it also into a new context as a different form of value. And it felt to me like that was something that had already been done um, quite viciously or unfortunately uh, in 1921. So I did this piece, uh, which will later be the anchor piece last year for my solo show in London in 1957, uh, when I was actually almost summing up my experiences and what I thought value was through the lens of black Americans or black people. Um, so this is a nine feet, oh, no, eight feet by 20 feet piece that um, also reflected that idea. Um, in 2020, well, actually, I finished the work in 2021, but I started in 2020. Um, and also, that work actually has points, once again, that range from 1921, actually, to 2021. Um, and I love that idea of making these pieces where even though the coins could be treated the same, but the value in terms of material, in terms of place that it's been, is completely different. Um, but it, it's almost considered as the same. Um, and these, these installations came up um, during COVID because um, I felt most of the beaches were closed. So obviously there is nobody there. Um, this was in 2020. And I could go sneak into the beach and like an empty place. And I, I felt I had made, uh, well, I had these huge four, like 48 inch discs of steel cut out um, that I was going to use for a, 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 a work. And then I was lying down, I mean, all shows are canceled and things like that. So I took them and then went to the beach and I installed them because I was thinking, how, how, how can I remove myself from, you know, the coloring, the texturing, actually, um, and then let these this be. So for the first time, I wasn't treating them in any way. I was just allowing them, placing them on these places, and seeing how our bodies or even humans react on or uh, connect with space and objects, how we were consuming objects, um, and how we were actually. Uh, Kind of controlling our spaces within us. And even though it was experimental, I did a series of these installations at different places. And my body was playing as the, almost like the activator because as it, as it is, like you, you wouldn't really, uh, 
recognize what it is, even though it reflects the, the space, the sky. And also, I love the idea that I felt like I was actually digging holes you know, through the earth, like, it's like you looking through the earth and looking down into another sky, um, as it is. And uh, this was in Ohio when I was you know, at my brother's place, but also this is where it began, where these installations were, like I said, it was almost like you are looking through the earth and you are looking at another sky. Uh, the idea of, of space and the complexity of space and place, um, I was just born that. Yeah, and even in this installation and short video, that was when you could only see the activation of the, of the object with the presence of the body. Um, once again, I was quite interested in knowing how our body is related to objects and how it connected to space and how that impact could be. Um, I was using the drone to take these, and once again, it was, uh, it was COVID, so I didn't really need permissions to do this. No one was, was out, and I could just go. And I love that freedom that just from one object, I could uh, kind of explore um, various themes and various forms like that. And also in space, that were just common space uh, spaces, but without the presence of our uh, bodies, I now have like some level of privilege to it. Um, so these have been the things that I was thinking about. And when I, uh, I, I, I had the opportunity to work towards the theme of this uh, year's show, which was about consumption, I was thinking about how um, through my practice, all these elements, all these objects, you know, could connect to, uh, together and kind of almost re-examine what how value is built based on our, our desire to consume, our exchanges, you know, circulation and distribution through commodities, through near objects, and how that also generates another form of value. So I made these um, these uh, six foot coin pieces, as I, I love to call them. But then now they are not only made of coins, they are made of steel, they are made of other metals like um, copper, which is all, it which all as, as material materials, they function as very different valuable materials based on their use, based on the context in which they are used for. Um, but these also because they have been used in making the penny before. So breaking these, these uh, picking these elements from the penny and uh, bringing it all back together was really my my kind of desire and uh, like my kind of curiosity into understanding how we were relating to objects, how these kind of discarded uh, residues of industrial waste, uh, how we were actually um, partaking into the, the structuring or, or the building of economies and ecologies and even environmental uh, uh, things. And I was building these things almost, you know, for, for at a glance, it looks like a pen or a disc or a, a planet. Um, in itself or something like that, that were reflect in our relationship with objects and how we could transform things into like almost mysteries, like something as complex as currency. Um, so I was making, I made these specific, three specific works um, to complement the other forms that had already interrogated value in so many being political, social political uh, ways and also into this um, new context of our values. So the show being the penny for what it's worth, we were actually aiming at looking at breaking it down to the, the concept of, of what currency and money is, uh, as well as the object itself, and you know, the complex and multiplicity of what, how we could explore those um, subjects. And as part of it, I thought um, the New York project was uh, primarily based you know, around labor and reward. And this quite fortunately, well, unfortunately, was around the same time that inflation was also like quite apparent. So um, what can you do with a penny was a question that you know, I thought 
really resonated well with the theme of the show and also with the, with the times that we were in. Because now, if you are given a penny, like, what can you actually do? Uh, and, yeah, and this, and this, which uh, we have the opportunity to do some here, I'll ask all of you these questions and I'll you know, be, be quite um, honest if you could respond to it and I'll actually give you a penny back. But the whole premise is us building or me interrogating how we could build uh, another form of value beyond the material and then also based on the exchange, based on the premise, based on your value uh, and based on how you or what your understanding of what value is and your understanding of what the penny actually is. Um, and and already in the show we did some of it and this is like an ongoing project that will end up as part of the, a part of the show and it will be a continuing because like in the gallery people are thinking about art or you know much more philosophical things but what if we take it out of the gallery you know what if it's in the park what if it's in here uh, you know people come to an artist talk what do we responses be and after hearing about my work what do you think that I did a penny now is um, so we these are some of the res responses that I got <laughs> which, which I love because this is these are things that are actually people giving you a thought of course <laughs> yeah um, yeah I'll, I'll run to you then Um, and and this is like the second iteration of uh, or another layer that I added to the, to the project to also expand beyond more pieces and uh, you know political social political wise into what we can actually create else that will not be only me being, being, being the dictator of it but also learning from those responses and the encounters as well. And as part of it, as part of the artist in residence. I'm also here learning from people, and these responses are giving me prompts um, because I'll be creating another, another sculpture or another artwork that will respond to my time being here, that will respond to me being in this space, that will respond to like, uh, yeah, the whole premise of the show and how we can, I can take it to a new uh, layer of production or interrogation or questioning or curiosity. Um, so if you find yourself in the gallery after, like, I think after you know, October 9th, I'll definitely finish something that will come from the responses that I received, the places that I was visited, and the conversations that I had, uh, and responses that I had from that. Um, thank you. So if you have any questions, remarks, comments, I'll be very glad to hear them. So the pennies I've used a number of supports, as I'll put it, I've used canvas, I've used wood, I've used metal. Um, so there are different uh, uh, adhesives that I use. On the on the on the wooden canvases, I use like archival medium quality, uh, almost white wood, and that is a very strong. I mean, I never expected it to be like that, but it's a very strong. And what I love about that is. It keeps it permanent, so it's not like it's not, it's not gonna lose out, it's not gonna age or like yellow as other goods do. Uh, on metals, I use uh, steel epoxy, and that's why the, 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 the metals are actually also attached to it. And that also is like almost liquid steel, that is almost all liquid welding. Um, so that, okay, thanks And you do it all yourself, or you get help? I started doing it all myself, but I couldn't. <laughs> so, yeah. so I have, I have, yeah, I have assistants uh, depending on the size of the project. But every now and then, mostly I have assistants. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Do you have any thoughts on? You know, I know that currency is going electronic. Yeah. Cryptocurrency is that going to enter your artwork at any point? <laughs> <laughs> 
um, about how uh, the digital, digital currency is going to go into our I think, um, you know, I'm really open to responding to the times that I mean, you know, these works are, you know, been the works that I've always been making are things that I've experienced. Uh, of course, a part of me thinks that um, these are going to be relics that will end up in archival spaces uh, because, you know, for instance, in 20, 30, 50 years, there, is, there isn't going to be, I assume, or I project, there isn't going to be tangible currency, but in what way we use it. Because even the, the imagery and text and, and the design of the coin has changed so many times. I, now, I don't think, I don't know, but I, wanna, I don't want to assume, but nobody has seen the half penny you know, half penny. So yeah, I think projecting to like 50 years, um, these will be things that will not only end in like a museum or an art collection, but it will end in a conservatory, like kind of a research object where people could learn from how money actually was uh, and how the material is. I think the crypto opens up to like NFTs, which I honestly don't understand until today. But, <laughs> but uh, you know, I, 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 I don't I don't stand to criticize what I did of that. But uh, you know, I think it's something new that I open myself to into learning and seeing how my work, if need be, uh, fit into that. Thank you. I'll take the lady first, please. Oh. <laughs> What size were the last discs? Uh, they were 72 inches. The last, the last circle uh, piece was 72 inches. So they, unfortunately, most of the work in here are quite huge, but in pictures it's strange. Uh, so they were like 72 inches. Yeah. Uh, and then the other one was 72 inches. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
was in residence with us until October 9th. That means that during our open hours, you can come see his studio, um, see the process, how he's manipulating these pennies to take on these different colors, how he's putting them together. And on Saturdays and Sundays, uh, y'all is inside the gallery from three to five. So come, come chat him up. <laughs> come hang out with Thank you all so much for coming.